Hi, I'm Maria Langer, and I'd like to take you on a tour of the panel in my Robinson R44 Raven 2 helicopter. Um, what you're hearing right now is the gyro spinning up. I have two gyroscopically controlled uh, instruments, and you're also hearing the, the avionics fan. Um, I've turned the power on so these things uh, light up and do what they're supposed to do. Uh, obviously, I'm not flying, so you're not going to really get the full effect. So I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. This thing at the top is a radar altimeter. It tells me my altitude over the ground, which right now is one foot because I'm on the ground. And this instrument is required by the FAA for Part 135 operations in a helicopter. Um, I should mention here that it's pretty much useless to me because I'm required to fly VFR, that's visual flight rules. So I should never need this instrument to tell me how far I am from the ground. I should be able to look out the window and see for myself. But the FAA says I need it, so there it is. Um, underneath there, you'll see the top row of uh, idiot lights like you might find in your car, uh, warning lights. The clutch light will go on when the clutch is activating, when it's moving. Right now it's turned off, so it won't, uh, won't go on at all. Sometimes it goes on in flight, but generally it goes on when I start the helicopter. And if you uh, watch any of the videos I've made of me starting the helicopter, you'll see that light on. MR temp is the main rotor temperature, and uh, that will go on if the uh, main rotor gearbox gets hot. Uh, next to that is MR chip, main rotor chip. And that is goes on if the chip detector uh, inside the transmission picks up any metal, uh, which would might be a bad thing. Um, next to that is the carbon monoxide detector, which seems to go on an awful lot in this uh, video. In fact, I did one recently where I departed from an orchard, and that light was on for a good portion of the flight. Starter on comes on when I push the starter button, and it should go off when uh, the helicopter started. Uh, if it doesn't, that means I have a starter issue. Uh, TR chip is tail rotor chip detector. Same thing, metal inside the, um, the tail rotor gearbox. Low fuel is my land now light, um, even though it's not red. That means that I've got, I think, five gallons of fuel left. And uh, five gallons of fuel is only enough, theoretically, for 20 minutes. Um, but man, when that light, you don't want that light to go on. And if it does go on, I get to the ground as quick as I can. And low rotor RPM goes on with a, an annoying horn. Here's the horn. Yeah. Uh, when the, lo the rotor RPM is below 97%. Um, that's how it's set in an R44. Um, what it means is that my rotor RPM is drooping. It's getting too slow and I need to give it some more throttle or uh, there's a number of other things I can do uh, to get that light to go off to get my RPM back up. Now my instruments. You've got the vertical speed uh, indicator. I should mention here that a lot of these are also in airplanes. Uh, you're seeing reflections in it. I've got something on the seat there. Um, the vertical speed indicator is my uh, ascent or descent rate, and it's in uh, feet per minute, or hundreds of feet per minute. Uh, next to that is my artificial horizon. And what that does is it uh, tells me uh, if I'm in a bank or if I'm going straight level, uh, or from ascending or descending. This instrument is really used more for instrument flight, but it's required for part 135 operations. And that ball down below will tell me if I'm in trim. And I found, finally found a nice level parking space, so I am level and that's a great thing. Airspeed indicator tells me how fast I'm going. This is in knots and miles per hour. Uh, generally we use knots, that's the outer ring. It's got colors on it telling you what's good. Um, the, at 100 knots, you'll see that that's got a special marker on it. That's my never exceed speed for auto rotation. It's my never exceed speed for doors off. Um, it's, I think it's my never exceed speed nowadays for uh, turbulence. Um, they just added that to the pilot operating handbook. And then there's a red bar at 130. That's my never exceed speed uh, period. I shouldn't be going over that at all, but my never exceed speed does um, drop down to lower numbers depending on conditions, my altitude for example, outside temperature, things like that. Next to that is my engine and rotor RPM. Uh, this is a helicopter instrument, you won't find this in an airplane. The needles in flight should be matched um, and when you start up the engine, the engine one uh, starts moving up and then eventually the rotor RPM one catches up with it and throughout the warm-up process those needles will be matched and when you're in flight, they should be matched at 
if the needles are split, that means that you, uh, your engine is not, well, it means you have a problem, first of all. Um, it, usually if it's split, it means that the engine is quit or power is down or whatever, and then uh, that means that you need to go into an auto rotation. And there's a test that we do at the startup to make sure that those needles do split. You want to be able to disconnect the engine from the um, rotor system if you have an engine failure, and that's one of the checks that we do at startup. Over here is my altitude, and that's above sea level, and that is adjusted by changing the number in the little window on the right side. Uh, right now you see it looks like it says 300. That's uh, 30.0, whatever the little number is that it's uh, selected. Um, and then you do that with the little knob that's at the bottom there. Uh, below that is my um, directional indicator, and this is a gyroscopic instrument that pretty much does the same thing as my compass. Uh, and of course they, they, they get out of kilter. Uh, the compass is up here. I've got a vertical card compass and you can see it's set to almost exactly um, 330 degrees. And this thing is off, which happens occasionally. And I usually I need to set this when I start flying. Uh, but I don't use it, I use the compass, so I really don't pay much attention to it. This is required for Part 135 operations, and again, it's something that you would use in instrument flight, which this helicopter never does. Next to that is my manifold pressure setting, and that is basically my power setting. And in flight, that would normally be somewhere between, say, 18 and 22 inches of manifold pressure. Uh, right now, it's registering the, the uh, manifold pressure of, of outside. Um, because it's not, um, I'm not flying, I'm not, the engine's not running. Got some more idiot lights under there. Fuel filter tells me if my fuel filter needs to be changed or if there's a problem with it. Auxiliary fuel pump, that light is on right now because I'm idling here, just basically burning battery power, which is never a good thing. Um, and that will go on normally when I'm priming the engine and it shouldn't be uh, going on in flight. If it goes on in flight, that means it's uh, the auxiliary fuel pump uh, is probably failing or has failed. Uh, that has happened a few times. It's not a dire emergency, but it's definitely something that you need to get looked at. Um, the alternator light is on right now because I don't have the alternator on, and uh, the engine, again, is not running. Engine fire and oil are two red lights here. Engine fire is pretty pretty obvious what that means. It means your engine's on fire. Get on the ground. And the oil light means that your oil pressure is either too high or too low, and the pressure gauge is right underneath of it. And then governor off, the helicopter has an electronic governor that keeps the throttle um, set exactly right so that you can, uh, you don't have to worry about adjusting the throttle in flight. Uh, that's, that's pretty common with modern helicopters. And the governor off light, when that, when that goes on, that means the governor has been turned off or it's, dis or it's broken. Um, that means that you gotta do, you gotta manage the throttle or, or see why that light went off. Okay, then I got a clock, a regular um, analog clock, which I prefer over digital. I like that second hand. It helps you to time things, uh, like uh, shut down. I have to time things for 30 seconds. Uh, then I've got a Hobbs meter. This helicopter actually has two of them. This is collective activated, which means that the numbers change when I pull pitch, when I pull up the collective and I'm actually flying. Then I've got my uh, amp meter, which is for my um, power, you know, the battery power. And I've got my oil pressure gauge registering nothing because my engine is off right now. Then I've got two fuel gauges, one above the other for my two fuel tanks, auxiliary, which is smaller, and main. Uh, together they hold uh, nearly 50 gallons of fuel. Right now they're both full because I got it topped off yesterday. And my oil temperature, of course, not registering anything because I'm turned off and the same thing for my cylinder head temperature. And those are the temperatures of the uh, oil and the uh, cylinder head, the engine temperature. Over here, I've got a bunch of switches and dials. Panel lights are the lights. If my uh, nav lights are on, like I'm flying at night, then the panel lights go on as well to, to light up all my instruments. And I can change the, the brightness of that. My nav lights are the two running lights on either side of the helicopter, one red, one green, that you have to uh, have on during uh, after sunset. Although when I'm doing cherry drying sometimes in the evening, I'll turn those on to make me more visible. Strobe light is a light on the tail that will blink, help prevent people from walking into the tail, uh, which would be a bad thing if they did that. Uh, the little brake light indicator is for my rotor brake. If that's on, that means my rotor brake is engaged. You don't want that on in flight. And the engine will not start if the rotor brake is engaged. 
And then under that, I've got a pretty fancy switch for my clutch. The clutch is what, in, what attaches the engine to the uh, rotor system. Uh, it's a series of four belts that are attached to a pair of sheaves. And when I turn that on, it adjusts them to tighten those belts. And uh, that switch needs to be on during flight at all times, which is why they put a guard over it. So you flick the switch with the guard over it, and it prevents you from accidentally switching it off. Uh, alternator turns on my alternator and master battery is on right now and that's what's making all this noise. And then I've got my um, my key for my mags right and left. Both of course is in flight and then if you look a little to the side it says prime. When I start this helicopter I have to prime the engine and I do it by turning the key to prime. Okay I'm back. You probably didn't even know I was gone. I was about halfway through recording this and I got a phone call and I had to go fly. Just got back and um, I can finish this up. So at the bottom half of my panel here, just review what the top end looks like. Gauges are now registering stuff, some of them anyway, because I just got in. Um, bottom half of the panel. So over here at the far left is my vent um, knob. I turn that and pull it out and it opens up the vent that gets fresh air in something I do when my carbon monoxide detector likes to go off, um, not terribly often. And uh, that little red knob on the side that's sticking out, that's my mixture. Right now it is full lean, that's how you kill the engine, you just pull that thing out. Um, and because of that it has a little uh, cover, so when it's full rich, turn it on, put it in right now just to show you, in flight it would be like that, so you don't accidentally pull it, but you'd have to be pretty dumb to accidentally pull it. Um, under that is my intercom stuff, uh, which I'm not going to go into in a lot of detail here. It just manages the intercom, isolates me from my passengers if it gets busy on the radio and they're chatty, um, turns on different intercom, uh, different uh, audio stuff so I can listen to different things. Beneath that is my radio, and the way that this works is the frequency on the left is the frequency that is active, and the frequency on the right is the one that's standby. And you can switch from one to the other by pushing that little white button. And I also have a button on my cyclic that I could push that does the same thing. Um, you, you dial it in, dial in the channel you want with the knob on the right, volume, blah, blah, blah. It's all, it's all there. Uh, below that is my GPS. I have a Garmin 420 in here, which is Navcom. So it's got a moving map, which you see it's, uh, all, it's got my current location in it. And it also has in it uh, a radio, so I could tune in a second radio on here. I can have a standby, uh, two frequencies, a regular and a standby, and you see those listed on the on the side there. Normally I keep one of them tuned to the local weather uh, service, so the, um, the airport's um, automated weather observation system, and then the other one is uh, the one that I use for the next radio, uh, the next airport I go to. And... Uh, just a whole bunch of buttons related to the GPS I don't really need to go into. And then on the very, very bottom, I've got a transponder. And what that transponder does is it sends a signal to air traffic control, to radar stations, that tells them my altitude uh, and location. Um, it also tells them who I am. You can see it has my end number in it. And this particular one is set up for ADSB out, which means that it, you can actually pick it up on ADSB. And uh, I'll try to remember to include a link to my ship in ADSB. So if you want to see where I've been, um, you can go on the web, and I think it'll uh, have the most recent flights there. Below that, you've got the outside air temperature gauge, which I usually uh, look at in, in Celsius, but it's in Fahrenheit now. You just flick the switch. It's kind of a cool morning here for the summertime. The knob there is for my cyclic friction. Uh, what I do is I tighten that up when I'm stopped so that the uh, controls don't flop around. And then I've got a cabin heat knob, and this boot that you're seeing right here is for my, whoop, come back up here, my cyclic, uh, which is back here. And I'm going to do a whole different video about the helicopter's controls, so I'll cover that there. And then other than that, I've got my ELT testing, um, which I can use to test. The ELT is Emergency Locator Transmitter so that if I um, go down, it will make, um, it'll make the ELT go off if I have a hard hit, and it'll send a signal out so people can find me, whatever. I'm not sure how much that really works these days, but, and I don't think I'm required to have it, but I have it. 
Um, and then the other thing just to keep in mind are all the fuses, the circuit breakers that I've got for um, various things in, in the helicopter and they're pretty much labeled. The clutch start one has a collar around it because there's an emergency procedure where you want to be able to find that quickly. So by putting a collar around it, it's easy to feel when you're kind of groping over there. And that's basically it. That's my panel. It's very simple. Seems like an awful lot, but it really isn't. A lot of these instruments you would find in an airplane, uh, some of them you wouldn't. And uh, that's about it. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know. Uh, put, them, uh, put them down below. And I hope you subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you want to see. Bye.